Previously on the Adventure Zone. Uh, congratulations are in order. The three of you are now uh, fully fledged members of our order. Uh, we are happy to have you on as reclaimers. Uh, we will send you out on missions and you will do what you did in Phandalin, ideally without involving the destruction of an entire city and well. the loss of thousands of souls. I mean, ideally, yeah, but like... Griffin put the capsule game from Shinryu into our game. <laughs> well, and also the capsule game from Kroger. You pop open that capsule, uh, and inside is an axe. And it is said that the rail splitter can, in a single swipe, chop down any tree. Why don't we go to Fantasy Costco and you can level up while you're walking around. You get the Extreme Teen Bible and the Scuttle Buddy. And I want a warranty. Uh, the Bible doesn't need a warranty, sir. It's the good book. All right, let's level you guys up. Um, yeah, so sure. I chose Battlemaster. Um, well, I was kind of thinking of maybe nature. <clears throat> Interesting. I never pictured you as the Captain Planet type. Yeah, I'm going to be joining the School of Transmutation. Keep your fucking Romance. back to yourself. Well, no, don't. Stuff it in your magical ass. Are you not entertained? And if you are, why don't you make it rain on our ass? It's a Max Fun Drive Adventure Zone! The three of you are sound asleep, like sweet little lambs uh, in your, um, we'll call it humble. It's a, it is a humble dormitory provided to you by the Bureau of Balance. Um, Have we put up like girly posters and like there's maybe like a lava lamp? No, no posters. The RA comes by every night. And he is a that real guy. stickler for posters. He is a dick. Um, what about the Dean? What's our relationship with the Dean like? Have good we, question. Um, you've pranked him a lot, so you're kind of on a shit list. We're like the Delta House. We're on double secret probation. You I don't get it. it. What exactly. is that a reference? Just just animal House references every... Your children, you don't know. Every episode. Um, <laughs> Welcome to Leonard Malton's House of Old Movies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, molten. so your dormitory, your room, uh, it, it, no windows, kind of like, kind of like living in a submarine. Are it's we in not, a prison? No, yeah, but sometimes it feels like it. It's not a prison as much as it is the ground, the entry level living compartment is the, that's the actual, uh, classification that the Bureau of Balance uses. The entry Co-ed level. Co-ed dorm, uh, maybe? No, just, well, if they're not for you specifically, uh, you do have a roommate. You got a double bunk bed situation. Um, uh, and you have a roommate. He, he is a halfling named Robbie, and <laughs> he's kind of shitty. He's not a great uh, roommate. Um, he, uh, he eats all of your snack chips before you even have a chance to get to them. Um, he loses your DVDs. I kind of like his style. <laughs> there's just yeah. loose, there's loose DVDs from your West Wing, like, full collection oh, box set, just, that. like, laying all over the place. But there's he's like, always got the choicest potions. potions. He does have some dank potions, and that's kind of, like, the only <laughs> thing that he has going for him. Um, so it is, uh, it's about three in the morning. Uh, you Griffin, all... I have a serious question for you real quick. Okay. Yeah, Since good. we've brought the gauntlet in, are yeah. we kind of like, are we like big shits? Like here, like do people know who we are? Is it like, oh, they're the first people to actually collect one of these you artifacts? Are we, a big, are we a big deal? Yeah. Um, I, I would say, yeah, you, you guys are somewhat big shits. You kind of got a Harry Potter vibe going for you, right? Like it, it's, okay. it's, you're not, you know, nobody's Who's li- Harry Potter. He's okay. A, All right. Okay. He's like a um he's a wizard. <laughs> um ah, you're not nobody's like lifting you up in the hallways and carrying you to your destination, but you 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 got some respect. Okay. And that's important. Yeah. Uh when you're on the inside. Again, you're not in prison. I don't know why I said that. Um, <laughs> so it's about three in the morning, you're you're all sound asleep, uh or at least you were, uh until you were awoken. By uh, Robbie uh, masturbating, Robbie just fucking <laughs> blasting it. Well, where where are you guys? Uh, I should. I just, hope I'm on the lower. D- yeah, to set the scene, where what what is what is your guys' bunk situation? All well, I, I guess I'm the shortest, so I'm probably under Robbie's bunk. 
Why would you think just the the smaller races well, have just to sleep because, in one set of beds no, and the no, taller... just because the big guys would would overpower me and they would want they whoa would want to sleep hey. in a halfling. That says no. The dwarves are not necessarily less physically capable. And I'm talking fact, emotionally, I've... emotionally. Oh no. well, then yes, you are not equipped for confrontation no. unless it involves I... um, you know spiritual magics. I would or say touch that of my Kenny is... Chesney CDs, right? Magnus wanted to be on a bottom bunk, but he's too passive aggressive. So he's on the top bunk. Taco's on the bottom bunk, but he wants to be on the bottom bunk. And you just pick the top bunk, and he just hates it. Well, it depends. Taco, where do you want to be? I'll, I'll defer to you. Uh, am I in character? Yep. We're, we're recording the podcast now. Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, is that, are you asking Justin? Or are you asking Taco in character? Ask oh, Taco in a conversation tough. you're having with Taco. Uh, Who do you want, Taco? Who do you want to speak to, Travis? I'm I'm terrified to stay. I'd rather speak to Justin. I like him better. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Like, uh, I'll take whatever. I think Taco would be pretty chill about it. I feel like he'd probably fall asleep. <laughs> I like just on whatever the first bed he touched. So I think that he... this is actually how it worked out in character in the scene. Just that there was like, no, I know it's fine. Do you want? And Robbie would go on no, top. Uh, I'll say top top bunk. Okay, Magnus is on okay, the bottom bunk. You are I can, le- you are I can eye level. levitate, so it's less of a risk for me to be <laughs> up there. You're also eye level with Robbie, which you may or may not want, because he gets into some whack shit up on yeah. the second story of the sleeping. <laughs> He's got boundary issues. He does. Um, I mean, his boundaries are fine, but he gets into your boundaries and just makes a mess of things. He's all up in your boundaries. It's three in the goddamn morning. And the three of you are woken up by the sound of chimes coming from the intercom. Bing, bing, bing. And you hear uh, <laughs> you hear the voice of Davenport say, um, Would the reclaimers, High Church, Burnside's, and Taco report to the briefing room? Mm, Davenport. Uh, I forgot that Taco's last name was also Taco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like Mario Mario. Or Luigi Mario. Um, you are all woken with a start. Robbie's like, Oh man, what a bummer! I was just getting some those goodsies. He takes a potion out from under his pillow. I don't know why I keep these under here. They're real uncomfortable. He slams it. <laughs> what soda does it most resemble? Uh, I mean, it's not in an, an aluminium can. It's like, right, it's a liquid, right? <laughs> yeah. He pops so the like, top. What slams liquid? It. What well, liquid does it most? What liquid soda? Does it's it actually it kind of got like it's kind of like orbits. You remember orbits? Like I that? was going to say, it looks like that nasty stuff with the gel balls. With the gel balls be orbits. In it. And he he looks and he's like, cut you, cut your eye, hey, cut your eye in my gel balls. That's what makes it extra <laughs> crunchy. And he winks, swigs hey, again. Can we get the hell away from him as I'm soon as li- possible, Griffin? I want to sidebar. I'm a little worried about this episode. I'm worried that you exhausted yourself so much coming up with the fantasy name Robbie uh-huh. that you may not have the creative juice to get us through the rest of the app. We need to be reassured. Well, uh, to actually make up for that, all of the characters in this entire campaign chapter will be named Robbie, and that's going to be oh, very confusing okay. for both you guys and the listener. <laughs> well, but it's good it, job. I think juice. it'll all be based on inflection, though, at that point, because yeah. it's Robbie, like Robbie, Robbie, Robbie. Robbie. Um, <laughs> I, me? I'm Robbie. And I'm a skeleton. Yo, Robbie, can I get one of them potions before we leave? Um, do you got, oh. what do you need? Fuck. Like, what's your flavor? What's your poison? <laughs> well, give me poison. your crunchiest, po- uh, your crunchiest potion. He's going to want something that attracts dogs. I'll give you a sampler of, uh, it's called my hair of the dog potion. It won't attract dogs as much as it will just get you real fucked up he says and hands you a very small sampler vial of uh of hair of the dog potion okay i slip it in my bag okay uh robbie's like hey can you do you think while you're out some pringles maybe you got it dude <laughs> come on oh can you take also i got a dvd that's like four months overdue at the no. red box uh-uh no, no it's too no. much too, too much. much no pringles yes dvd no and it's going to be the dill pickle Pringles, too. Oh, man. Oh, Extreme yeah. dill? Uh, okay, I'm imagining you guys are going to the briefing room. I, it's okay. up I also imagine we don't exactly know where it is. Hey, how are we getting there? Just uh, go to a dome. Are there helpful signs? Yeah, there's a dome. And then there's a sign that says, this dome is the briefing room. And we're all still in our PJs. 
<laughs> okay. Footy pajamas here. <laughs> Uh, the three of you walk into the briefing room in your footies, in your onesies, in your snuggies. Um, Mine has a flap in the back. Of course it does. Um, is it half open so you can see a little yes. bit of butt? Okay. You can see, the, the, little, corners you can see the little tattoo on his bottom. <laughs> you and what is that tattoo of? That That's actually Kenny Chesney, too. But that's the face. I got the face on my left butt cheek. Do you, and what's okay. on your right, the body? Yeah, I was going to ask, do you have other body parts of Chesney sort of scattered <laughs> about your body? Like these? No, that's a mystery like to be unfolded for the rest of the podcast. On his other cheek is Tim McGraw, and it's like this terrible Hydra with, like, <laughs> Tim McGraw and Kenny Chesney's face heads emanating from his butthole. It's a real <laughs> it's, horror show back there. It's actually, it just says, she thinks my, and then there's a, a, a tattoo of a tractor okay. and an apostrophe S. So kind of a pictogram sexy. on your ass. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a full kind, of a, kind of a country music rebus. <laughs> Actually, it's Reba's Macintyre. A Reba's oh, Macintyre. Right. So, Whoa! Uh, this, <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. You are... Uh, I hope not. In the briefing chamber with the uh, director, she is reading a large roll of parchment. Um, that actually kind of looks like the parchment that you saw the monk carrying when you first encountered the uh, void fish that had all of Magic Brian's information on it. Uh, and uh, she is sitting over a large map showing the lands of the earth world below. Um, and she's reading this uh, uh, parchment. She's very frustrated. Um, and she places it down on the chamber and says, uh, What are you wearing? What is? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? <laughs> I'm wearing my full business regalia. Cool. Uh, you got ink underneath that thing? And the three of you look like little Nemos. Merle, I can see three quarters to four fifths of your entire butt. I, I'm you look sorry, like, I'm cheating you of one fraction. You look like Jeffy from Family Circus. <laughs> <laughs> this is my uh, sleepy sack. I good night, Sarah. I guess Mr. Wrong told me not to. The three of you will need Somebody to... Somebody unzip me! The three of you are going to need to suit up into your business regalia because I have a job for you that I need you on right now. Uh, well, just... give me like 45 minutes. You, you don't have 45 minutes. At most, I can give you four. Okay. Um, Magda starts changing. Three of that's going to be hair product. <laughs> uh, she says, mere hours ago, one of our reclaimers, uh, a brave soldier named Lehman Kessler, was murdered in the city of Rockport. Oh, and bummer. His, his murder came at a most inopportune time because he managed to Locate. Is, Lee, is Lehman Kessler a listener? Uh huh. So somebody listening at home was just like, hey, hey. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. his Also, murder... I would ask, when would a murder come at an opportune time? <laughs> his murder came at a most inopportune time because he had just managed to locate and retrieve one of the grand relics. Uh, his murder came uh, at an opportune time. He'd done everything he wanted to with his life he was and surrounded couldn't think by of family. anything else. <laughs> They watched solemnly as an assassin came in and buried a knife in his heart. <laughs> and everyone agreed it was the right time for that to happen. Last night, we received a missive uh, telling of his success. But before we could extract him, a, a thick fog set in over Rockport, uh, which prevented us from uh, sending a, a, a sphere to collect him and the relic. Um, However, there is a commuter train that operates out of Rockport uh, that runs from Rockport uh, through the uh, the teeth, the mountain range that separates uh, the continent below, uh, and ends in Neverwinter where uh, we could more safely and discreetly extract him. Uh, he managed to secure passage on this train, uh, loaded his cargo onto the train, but before it could depart... Uh, he was murdered, uh, which is leaving us in quite a sticky situation. Mm. Do we know anything about the murderer or how it actually like went down? We know nothing. We haven't been able to get into contact with the authorities, and even if we could, there's not much information we could tell them. It could it could lead to uh, I don't know. It could it could lead to a, a very difficult situation for us. We can't explain what he was doing there, why he was murdered. 
We don't even know why he was murdered, because ostensibly nobody would know about the Grand Relic unless they were in the, the Bureau of Balance. There, there's we, a lot. We have a lot of unknowns. Do we know the status of the Relic right now? It's on the train as far as we know. Um, and that is where the three of you come in. We will need one of you. Uh, it's up to you to decide whom. Tibbs! Uh, okay, that was... <laughs> We will need one of you to impersonate Lehman. Double dibs. Lehman Kessler. Uh, I have secured two other tickets uh, on on the train, so all three of you can board, but one of you will need to be Lehman Kessler. Uh, You will need to retrieve the relic and get it back to us uh, any way that you can. What What did Lehman look like? Yeah, what what race was he? Uh, Lehman was a half elf uh, man, okay. and uh, but but he it, there's no guarantee that the uh, the operators of the Rockport Limited uh, even know what he looked like. He could have secured his 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 ticket uh, in advance. Uh, so so it's up to you. It's I, it, I any one of you can be Lehman. Whoever has the I guess the most panache, the most flair for the the fanatic. highest performance skill. Whatever it takes, um, we'll need you to. We'll need you to make believe, make pretend, like a couple of actors, or I'm just actually, one actor. I'm actually negative one there, so I'm going to dip a rooster. <laughs> <laughs> what will the other two be doing? Uh, the other two will be ensuring that the new Lehman Kessler, the fresh off the block Lehman Kessler, uh, isn't murdered. Uh, because obviously someone's going around murdering Lehman Kesslers. Uh, this this will be also a security job. Well, I got a I got a plus one. <clears throat> you don't have to figure who it out right bringing, now. Who are you bringing with you? <laughs> well, if, if, if I need a body, if somebody needs a bodyguard, I say I I'll be Lehman, and that way our best fighter is able to protect me, and our best magician is able to protect me. Oh, as opposed funny. to all of our other magicians. Okay. Well, let's listen. That's semantics. <laughs> uh, uh, what can you best. tell us about the artifact? Uh, we don't know. We we can't sort. Of, we we what know that he shit? collected. Well, we know he collected an artifact, but if that missive had been intercepted in the air. We, we, with that information, that incredibly valuable and dangerous information could have fallen into enemy hands. So we purposefully keep it vague. Well, great. Let's do are it. Are you going to fire us out of the cannon? We absolutely are going to fire you out of Yay! the cannon. Yay! Yay! Uh, One more you, question before we you? go. How do the gauntlets work? The what now? The gauntlets, the bracers. Our bracers. Oh, you the just bracers. point and click, baby. Windows 98. Okay, cool. Where's Killian? Is she gonna come with? I'd feel better if she were there. Killian, Killian is a regulator. She she cannot go with you on a reclaiming mission. Well, can is we it, signal for her if we get in trouble? You, the only way you will signal for her is if you find the artifact and use and it and keep it. And right? then she that will be- that signal. Yes, will sound off, and then she will come, but not for hang time. She will <laughs> kill all of you. You are getting a little obvious there, Maggie. What? Uh, Listen, she's yeah, a fan what? favorite. I'm trying to reintroduce her to the story. <laughs> yeah, let's get, I guess let's get Johan and Clark in the mix too, huh? As yeah, I want to keep. I want to keep the people. Can we bring Billy Blue Jeans back? Barry Blue Jeans. It was Barry Blue Jeans. His brother Billy oh. Blue Jeans is in Neverwinter. Oh, we how, met Billy too. How quickly you forget, huh? Boy, Barry must have made a real impact on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go change clothes. Magnus has already changed. Go. Uh, how did you already change? I, I started changing when you started telling your story about murdering somebody or you something. You got your dick out and your whole <laughs> naked body out while she yeah. was talking to you? Yeah. Nobody. But you need to tell noticed. me these things. You need to tell me these things while I I literally said time. Magnus starts changing. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. You, you're very you, that was We a thought successful you had the change of life. Yeah. That was a, yeah, I thought you were pupating. Um <laughs> Magnus starts changing his opinions about politics. <laughs> okay, you you run back to your uh, your dormitory. Robbie's there. Is like, what's up? Are you all going on a secret <laughs> mission? <laughs> hey, do you have any disguise potions? Oh, no, that's a good I question. Got a rusted root CD. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay, um, perfect. Let me see disguise Dip- potion. I'm gonna be sent on my way. <laughs> on this adventure. No, my potions on. aren't necessarily um, 
useful. No, yeah, they're, yeah, they're not utilitarian in nature. They, I mean, unless the utility you want is to get real fucked up, he says. I'll take one. Oh, well, okay, I can't just keep giving you guys these. these I'll, I'll bring you back a rusted hey. root CD. If you guys actually bring me back a rusted root, I can throw it in mortar and pestle <laughs> and whip up a kind of potion that has never been invented yet. All right. We'll do it. Um, okay, the three of you report to the hangar. Um, it's uh, There's not a lot of people out walking around the campus. Obviously, most people are sleeping. Uh, not everybody's been assigned a secret 3 a.m. mission. Uh, the, at the hangar, there's... Uh, so you're only- saying, like, the line of security is pretty light? Yeah, yeah, you make it through TSA like pretty quickly. Um, uh, did it? We stop. The, we stop at the at the Hudson News. Magnus, actually, the TSA wants to know about the super fuck up po- the the hair of the dog potion that you have because it's over two ounces. Oh, uh, uh, drink it. You're gonna have to slam that right now. They say no. Yep. Sorry. Yep. You yeah, can either too. slam it right now or throw it away. But I don't want to be it. fucked up in the cannon. Slam it. Fuck up. It may be better that theory. way. Yeah. Okay, people... Magnus slams it. Okay, yeah. you immediately. Oh, gross! We just had to talk Magnus into something. <laughs> <laughs> um, you immediately uh, forget like how to speak well. Uh, you're you you are uh, you will suffer a penalty to any wisdom checks until uh, we'll say disadvantage to any wisdom checks until this thing wears off. Um, but you're real chill. You're you're super duper chill, um, and you're real happy about it. Uh, Ditto, is this the first night that we are there? Like, no, no sorry, I should have. I, yeah, I should have set up the timeline. It's been about it's been about uh, three weeks since you've been there. Okay. Things have been pretty quiet. There just hasn't been a whole lot of new intel coming in, uh, and this is the first mission that you guys have really been. Have we assigned. done any sort of like learning? Like in the three weeks you've been here, have we have we learned anything about? The relics or the nature of this organization or anything that we've picked up of use? That's actually a good question. Um, so, yeah, what you've learned, you've learned a little bit about the relics. The, the There's not a whole lot that is, like, concrete information about the relics because uh, it, it just by nature of the fact that they were never in the possession of one entity for long enough for that information to be, you know, especially trustworthy. Um Maybe there are a lot of misinformation campaigns spread during the the conflict where people were trying to hunt these down uh, to get people off of the scent. So there's not a lot that you know for sure. Um, well, one thing that you do know is that each of the seven relics uh, belongs to a different school of magic. So the uh, the gauntlet that you found, which can summon huge bouts of flame and, uh, you know, was was mainly based around destruction was mm-hmm. uh, from the evocation school of magic. So that one's right. dealt with. Uh, you don't have to deal with that one. But uh, yeah, each each uh, of the relics belongs to a different school of magic. So uh, there's alteration, alteration, illusion, illusion necromancy, uh, accounting, accounting, um, Hufflepuff. Mm-hmm. So like, there's a lot uh, air, uh, heat, heat and air repair. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's um, medical database entry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can think of a couple others. Give me some time. That's actually <laughs> a bureau of balance tech. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, at the technical at the, com- <laughs> the, the two year bureau of balance, <laughs> bureau of balance <laughs> community college technical institute. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's about all the the information you gained. It's been kind of boring. You, you just haven't had like a lot to do. You've done some training, keeping your bodies right. Um, but get any levels or anything? No, I gave you two. Levels we gained in the last six episode. levels. No, We're now level ten. We can't spend more of an entire episode just leveling you guys up. So, um, it was it was a smash hit though. Everybody people really love people, people love leveling up. Yeah, people love uh, mechanics. Uh, there's only one guard standing watch uh, at the hangar, the night shift, the graveyard shift, uh, and it's your old pal Avi, who uh, gave you the brandy when you first arrived here. Avi. Avi. He's like, hey guys, what's Avi, up? Avi, I'm real fucked up. Oh, dang. What what happened to this guy? <laughs> oh, hair of the dog that bit him. <clears throat> you're not really supposed to like get on one of these if you're... I mean, I won't tell. I'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you, you kind of sound like uh, some kind of wolf, it's man. It's totally cool, dude. Why are you... Why is it whisper time? <laughs> okay. Uh, do you guys... Avi, Avi, <laughs> Avi. 
Avi. Yeah. Avi. You're great. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You're That's his nice. best friend. I think you guys I are pretty. Really, I think you're a cool dude. Yeah. <laughs> Avi. Yeah. Do you want to go on a mission? I can't. I'm not. I can't. It's my okay, job. Okay, we'll meet you down there. I, well, I won't be able to. Avi, be cool yeah. for two seconds. I think I'm being Just, pretty cool. Avi. Isn't this, yeah. Shh, 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 shh. Be cool for two seconds. Okay. <laughs> We'll see you down there. I won't. Don't. Shh. Avi, it's a secret mission. Shh, 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 shh. We'll see you down there. Wink. Wink. You're Sorry, a cool Gable dude. clarification. Did he just w- wink or say wink out loud? Both. <laughs> Um, oh, <laughs> that's be okay. Um, we got him. We got him. It we seems like him. you're having a great time. I would wink back, but I can't. Um, never learned how. Um, no, Do you I. Have any of that brandy we could take with us, though? No, it's like it's like three in the morning. I'm gonna actually cut you guys off. Um, you're cut off. Uh, I, I don't. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here because I'm about to fire you out of a cannon. <laughs> um, uh, have you guys used one of these before? Is this your first time getting uh, getting shot, getting blasted? Well, well, obviously we've been blasted before. Yeah, clearly. no cannons. And no cannons. Um, okay, well it's it's a uh, it's pretty easy, guys. Uh, just uh, pop pop in. Magnus uh, gets in. He taps on the uh, sphere to open the door. Somehow Magnus got in before <laughs> the door was open. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, it's the same type of sphere that you guys uh, came in to the Bureau of Balance on. Um, uh, it is a Volkswagen-sized uh, glass ball with uh, heavy brass fittings all around. Are um, we talking like Jetta, Beetle, like a van? What uh, kind golf, of Volkswagen? Vol- Volkswagen Golf. Um, okay, thank you. And uh, yeah, uh, taps taps on it. Same sort of situation. Four chairs uh, uh, with straps uh, for for you to lock in on. Um, and uh, yeah, Magnus right, is down and immediately falls chair. asleep. <clears throat> you get the extra chair. You're gonna like recline one and lean back. Well, let's let him lay down in two chairs. Okay. He actually uh, obviously says, uh, "Ooh, careful, man! Uh, if you do that, you'll definitely die." Shh, shh, That's okay. Shh, let him. <laughs> well, okay. It'll be kind of a weird way for his character to be uh, <laughs> written out of the story, but I'll buckle him in on both seats. Um. Why is this a thing? Can we just get the fucking cannon or what? <laughs> Put him in a seat. Avi, be cool. Taco wants action. I want out of this place. Okay, so there's one seat that uh, is something of the uh, captain's seat, uh, which uh, somebody will need to be in charge of. There's no. I got steering. it. No, no, man, don't drink and drive. Okay. Don't drink potions and drive. Who wants to be in charge of uh, the landing of this? Taco! Mm. <laughs> Get up here, big boy. Well, I mean, okay, my intelligence and dexterity are both pretty good. I, I think guess it, guess it makes sense. I'll, uh, I'll, ta- I'll take the reins. Okay. Uh, uh, Avi says, um, well, there's not really reins to speak of. Uh, you're you're going to want to sit in this, um, this front left chair, and uh, there's a handle. That you're gonna feel. You feel it on the left side. Yeah, right there. He's feeling his handle. Dad, what? Yucko, moving on. Uh, I get it. <laughs> I've got the. I've got the totally non-sexual handle. He says uh, next? <laughs> before this is super important. Mm-hmm. Before this thing hits the ground, and then the door shuts. <laughs> <laughs> But you, okay, the door shut. Before it hits the ground, you gotta pull the handle. Pull the totally non-sexual handle right before it hits the ground, or else you go bang. Okay, bye. Got it. Who was that? <laughs> Probably Avi. Okay, kick it. Floor uh, it. Uh, as soon as the door shuts, uh, a, a large uh, tube pops out, uh, slowly ascends <laughs> from the ground. Hey, how come Griff, uh, Travis can get away with it? Uh, the sphere that was in uh, character, Dad. The, the three of you are loaded on on top of the uh, the uh, the departure gate. 
uh, rolls forward into the tube, and a hatch behind you uh, slams shut. And then we sit in the tube for 30 minutes while they check something on the, on the sphere. <laughs> yeah, they de-ice the tube uh, for a long time. It's completely pitch black. There's, there's no light whatsoever um, until uh, you, you feel this, this tube that you're in start to <laughs> descend. Why, what There's is it about no the word, word tube, Travis? Because it doesn't <laughs> even seem word. remotely like fallopian tubes. Is that what you're having a raffle about? <laughs> no, it's just a funny word, Griffin. Uh, it descends. You feel it descend, and then you see a small uh, like uh, pinpoint of light in front of you. Um, like an aperture? And you hear a voice say, uh, Please put your head flesh with the back of the chair so you don't break any of your neck bones i'm the flight safety person and good luck <laughs> this is a pre-recorded message on the best take we could get <laughs> Depart- i heard him say flush departure in three two one what oh sorry did you sorry it's <laughs> the audio quality is not great because it's like fantasy but um, I said dep- I want a large fries. No, it's not three, two, one, bye. Uh, and the three of you are flung forward uh, at uh, a velocity that you previously may have considered unsurvivable. Magnus's uh, neck breaks and he dies. Um, <laughs> yeah. Magnus, are you actually laying between two chairs or are no, you? No, I'm sitting up like a big boy. Okay. Uh, that's, yes, uh, and this is, this experience is especially exhilarating for you. It's basically the ending of 2001 the Space Odyssey, uh, because you guys are basically flying, but you're actually just falling very, very quickly. Would you a say it's a sobering direction. experience? Uh, yeah, I would say so. It's, uh, if, if only you could open up a window and get some fresh air on your face. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would say that the effects of this potion... Uh, while potent are not especially long lasting, it's basically salvia, the salvia of uh, got it of potions. Dad, salvia was a legal drug um, that you were allowed to take for a long time that would make you basically teleport, but for like fifteen minutes. I read about it in Rolling Stone. I was going to say, did, yeah, d- this is you telling my character, not telling your father. No, right? yeah, I'm, and again, I'm saying. I read about sure. it in Rolling Even Stone. Even drug is a stretch. It was from the earth. Yeah, yeah. it was a. It was like a blueberry. Or it was a, kind, a potato. A kind, kind bud. But you three all have this knowledge from your from reading. the Rolling from Stone. From Rolling Stone. Stone. From yeah, the from Rolling, Rolling Stone. Stone. Like, tra- like Travis said, it's like a blueberry or, or like a heroin plant. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, folks, I just want to step in here. Uh, I'll tell you. <laughs> We've been in the rest of the episode, Justin. <laughs> I know, I know, but, like, this is Justin. Yeah. Sorry to Not interrupt. Right. This is Travis out of character. I want to step out of my you character, You may know me Justin. from my work in the <laughs> podcast. Just cut to just Justin listened. in the podcast dressing room, <laughs> a towel around his neck. Oh, hello. Didn't see you <laughs> oh, come man. in there. Tough morning of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm re- when I'm ready to unwind after a long, I have an orbit podcasting. I have an orbit <laughs> gum, and also soda. An orbit so- no, uh, and I buy plane tickets. <laughs> why do we have an episode this week? That's a fine question. Well, it's the uh, it's Max Fun Drive time. What's the Max Fun Drive? Well, Maximum Fun is a podcast network that we're a part of, along with uh, other shows that we do, like My Brother, My Brother, and Me, Sawbones, uh, Bunker Buddies. Um, and, and there's a ton of other podcasts on the network that people love, like Jordan Jesse Go and Stop Podcasting Yourself and uh, Lady to Lady, uh, Ono, Ross, and Carrie, so many others. Um, and this podcast network is funded by people like you who love our shows. Uh, so every year, once a year, we come to you hat in hand and say, hey, if you've enjoyed the uh, the podcasting that you've heard from us over the past year, we would really appreciate a monthly uh, donation to our organization and to the shows you listen to um, specifically. Because once you sign up to pledge a monthly gift, uh, you'll, you'll say what shows you want your money to go to. And uh, it's actually split between the network and those specific shows. So you're directly supporting 
the shows that uh, you love on Maximum Fun. So I, I would imagine that we have like a lot of listeners who maybe this is the first show on Maximum Fun that they got down on. Um, we're, we're tapping into that that uh, rich vein of D and D podcast listeners. Um, sure. Can you explain like what we? have used that money for other than yeah, just bundles it, and bundles of salvia. Well, we've used it to purchase equip the equipment that makes uh, this show possible. We purchased some new microphones so Dad and I can uh, record here. Uh, we've helped to uh, set up live shows and stuff like that across the country. We pay our hosting fees. We pay for the art that, uh, that, that this podcast, you know, the, the podcast art for this podcast um, all, all kinds of stuff like that goes to goes to uh, help support the show and help make the show what it is. And also, it, it also it also goes to the network so the network can continue to grow and add new shows like Adventure like the, Zone the Adventure, and Bunker Buddies. Straight up, bar none, no holds barred. The Adventure Zone like just wouldn't exist if it was not for the donations that we have uh, gotten because we've been a part of the network now for like what five years. Um, mm-hmm. So so yeah, the, the stuff like the Adventure Zone and. Bunker Buddies and Sawbones, like the all the shows that we've you know expanded and added, just wouldn't be possible without the support that you guys have given us. And but here's the thing: not- you can become a Max Fund donor for just five dollars a month. What? I know, I as know. low as five dollars a month. And for five dollars a month, here's the thing: not only do you get the wonderful feeling of knowing that you're supporting an awesome network, you also actually get shit, which is pretty cool. Uh, hey, it's- Dad. Uh, Dad. I want my daddy to tell me what I get for gifts. Oh, come on, radio uh-huh. professional! Come on, radio professional! All right, like for five bucks a month, you get an exclusive bonus content amount. You get an exclusive bonus content you can't get any other way. There's tons. Oh, like there's literally years of material. I think I I like added it up, and it's literally like days of of worth of stuff to listen to good, that goes back, including five years. including including a bonus adventure zone episode. We know that you get you get uh, lonely in those weeks off, not during Max Fun Drive, because we're doing two two consecutive weeks of episodes, which don't get used to because it's still killing us to make that. Uh, but if you want even more, we have a forty five minute long prequel to the Adventure Zone uh, that tells the story of how Merle, Taco, and Magnus met and became adventuring buddies, and it's really great. And some of my favorite characters I've ever devised are in it. And <laughs> now I'm never going to get to use them again. Uh, but if you want to be, if you want to hear that, it's uh, you, you gotta you gotta become a uh, a monthly Maximum Fun donor member. Dad, what about ten dollars? Yeah, if you want more, ten dollars, you get the Drive exclusive Tote bag. That's <laughs> French for tote bag. Yep. Now, do I still get the bonus content? Oh yeah. That's the beauty of it. You really took a shot in the dark. I really had no idea. (laughs) You You got it in one. Well, it's, it's, I, I have a lot of knowledge. That, I am, you know, I'm new Daddy, at this. Hey, Daddy. Yes, son? You have been a, I don't, I'm, I don't know how much our listeners know about, about you, you and the your mysterious style. Clint McRoy. Because they know about us, right? If, if they've been listening to My Brother, My Brother, me, they know our deepest, darkest secrets. Mm-hmm. They know every angle of us. Uh, yeah. They may not know you've been working in radio for 60 years. Mm-hmm. 40 years? Is it really 40 goddamn years? Man, it's you're old as 40 shit. 40 goddamn years, trust me. Um, and have you ever done a pledge drive before? No, I have participated in bonus episodes here, but I've never, I've never been the person that made the plea. Have you done like a PBS? Like, I'm talking I've about done PBS. Actually, I did do a PBS fundraiser. With uh, with uh, uh, the uh, D- John Pertwee, Doctor oh, yeah. Who number three. Ew. So yeah. so you should. I be... wore my I wore a Doctor Who number four scarf, and he made great fun of me. Yeah. <laughs> As well, so he I should. can't imagine why. So you should be like super dope at this, and you should really bring you in the big. I am. Well, let me see how I do with this one. Okay, twenty dollars per month. You get the in-flight power pack. I'm talking the mobile device charger, the collapsible water bottle, antibacterial wipes. You get the pilot wings too. Those all have the maximum fun rocket ship logo on them, right? Yeah, they do. And maybe you're wondering, do you still get the exclusive? bonus content do you still get the exclusive tote bag i don't know yes you do you do yes you do do. do. now let's say you want 35 dollars a month to go to us how about a pair of rocket engraved shot glasses in case you're a two-fisted drinker you can just wham them back wham them back and get all the other stuff you're not responsible for anything that happens to you after whamming them back hundred dollars per month membership in 
The inner circle. Oh, now, Dad, what's that? <laughs> that is where we sacrifice animals on an altar of blood. <laughs> the altar's made of blood? How does that even work? Is it frozen? And it's very, yeah, a lot of, like, gel to it. <laughs> frozen and blood it ice altar. Congealed frozen blood. It's like a, a jello mold of blood. Let me step in here before we make it more games. MaximumFun.org slash donate is the place to go oh. do this. You're certainly already uh, feverishly Googling to figure out how you give us money. Uh, MaximumFun.org forward slash donate. The Inner Circle is a secret club oh. where Maximum Fun hosts every month will send you uh, uh, one of the, the hosts of Maximum Fun will send you something special, something that they love that's important to them. And if you're part of the Inner Circle, that you're going to gift that gift in the mail every month. True uh, or false, think- did we not send people a digital copy of the movie Meet the Deedles? Or did we try to? No, incorrect. We tried to do that. That was unavailable. We sent them... Well, the, that one's the locked C- away soundly in the Disney we're, vault. We're <laughs> sent, we sent the, the Buckshot LaFunk CD. Oh, yeah! Pray for my sauce. Jazz, pop, funk, rap uh, uh, experimentation of Buckshot LaFunk. Now, say um, I want to do... I want to go all out. Big money, cash money... Two hundred dollars per month. No, can't do it. It's can't, not can't possible. It's it can't be done. We're hearing from our boss upstairs that for a limited time God. you can do two hundred. God is God. talking God. to us. Get, get that just, money, son. <laughs> How get, about get, free get, registration get for Max FunCon two thousand sixteen? Yeah. Paper chase, homies. So two hundred dollars <laughs> a month. You get everything that we described so far, and. Registration for Max Funcon 2016. Max Funcon is wonderful, by the way. Yeah, if you're already a donor to the network, uh, you can still get these gifts. You just need to step up your pledge drive amount. If you're at 20 bucks right now, go to 35. You get the whole kit and caboodle. You're at 10 dollars, go to 20. Do a little bit more. Have you started listening to new shows uh, the, over the past year? I mean, you know, you've started listening to Adventure Zone or or uh, uh, some of the other shows on the Maximum Fun Network. Please. Uh, we just we can only do this because you support it. So don't wait. Go right now while you're thinking about it. Go to maximumfund.org slash donate. I want to someday make enough money that we can do this every week. We're looking for a cure. And not We're only looking that for a cure. Let me say this. Podcast fever. <laughs> if you're if you're already a donor and like you're giving at the level that you you know that you can comfortably do, but maybe because of new shows like Adventure Zone, you've shared them with other people, like you have friends that you know have become fans of Max Fun because you said, "Hey, listen to this show. I know you like Dungeons and Dragons. It's really funny." Now they started listening. Encourage them. Say like, "Hey, are you a donor? This is the time to give. You're going to get extra stuff." You know, start at five not or a- ten. If you're not a donor, uh, keep in mind that every new donor we get, we have challenge donors that are kicking in a set amount uh, for every for every new donor that we get, and there's a lot of challenge donors. So even if you kick in at the five dollars a month level, we are going to get like a pretty big donation uh, for, just because you joined up from from all the challenge donors. So, so keep that in mind too. It, it's basically doubling up on your on your donation. If you can't donate, I I understand sometimes times are really tight. You can't kick in that five dollars a month. I uh, we totally understand. If you would though, if you can't do that, please uh, help us spread the word about the drive. You can use the Max Fun Drive hashtag and and use that link maximumfund.org forward slash donate. Just help us get the word out about the the drive going on and help bully other people into. into <laughs> and and, l- and let me huge. say, this is also a chance for us to say thank you so much. When whenever you start a new show like Adventure Zone, you start a new thing. It's always kind of like, man, I really hope people like this because we literally like doing it. 10 people were going to listen to it just and to- and you guys have been so amazing it's really wonderful to to launch a new show and get such a response to it right away so whether you donate or not just thank you very much for listening thank you for enjoying our show and other shows like this on maximumfun.org you guys are really really wonderful thank you so much back that was really sincere yeah that's how we do it uh should we get back to the adventure Let's get back Maximum to the show. Oh, if you donate. donate. MaximumFun.org for slash donate. If you donate, tweet at us so we can thank you. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. The three of you aren't falling so much uh, as you are. You, you weren't shot out of this cannon straight down. Um, rather, you were shot at uh, kind of a, a steep angle. You're almost going forwards more than you're going down. Um, and uh, it's kind of beautiful. The, the sun is rising. 
uh, over the teeth, uh, which is a, a towering mountain range uh, that runs over a, a long isthmus. I'm incapable of saying that word. Is ith is isthmus the one that's like a strip of land connecting two bigger yes. pieces yeah. of land? Okay, like the isthmus of Panama. That's right, a br- just Cut, you can say Christmas. Why is this hard? <laughs> And a, it's the ongoing war on Ithsmith. Um, <laughs> uh, you're flying over the teeth. It's 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 beautiful. It's uh, it is the scariest imaginable way to travel, but it is not without uh, its benefits um, because you get a full 360 degree panoramic view of the uh, of the world around you. Um, and so you're you're flying over the um, over the teeth. Um, when you, you you reach the end of the range, when you finally start to descend, um, again it's just so beautiful. You you are flying over a flock of of pegasuses, pegasi, Aww. um, and you're actually getting really close to them as you're descending, and you're just, you're I going the handle. so fast. I pull the handle. Uh, you pull the handle. That was like, intoxicating, though. For a second, I was just like staring at it, like let's just let it end. Okay, you pull the <laughs> handle. You're still about um. You're st- got a good nine episodes. You're still about. It's been uh, a good run. We all hold hands. You're still about a mile off the ground, um, and you pull the handle right. Actually, right before you are about to collide with this flock of uh, of pegasi. Uh, no, it's peg- pegasus. Uh, oh. Um. And uh, you, you pull the handle, and your uh, sphere is encased in a silvery light, uh, and your descent starts to slow down uh, right actually as you get into this flock of pegasi. Uh, you haven't, uh, you, you didn't obliterate any of them with Aww. your trajectory. Um, you, you have slowed down. Um, however,. Um, <clears throat> You are now spending a uh, a lot of time being caught in this uh, flock, uh, and they are panicked. Uh, a, a few of them run into the uh, the glass uh, chamber, uh, and by the time that you get out of this swarm of beautiful winged horses, uh, your they're trajectory, just pooping everywhere. We are covered in pegashit. Uh, you are covered in pegashit, and your trajectory has changed. Pretty wild. Well, super cool, DM. Uh, <laughs> what? Well, we're supposed to get on a train. You've ruined it with your storytelling. I didn't tell you to pull the handle. Your uh, your trajectory has changed pretty wildly. You are uh, uh, you've basically turned about ninety degrees to the left uh, in the direction that you were originally headed, uh, away from a lush, soft green pasture outside of uh, the town of Rockport, which you can see the uh, the lights of below. Uh, you you are moving away from that destination and into a thickly wooded area. Super cool. Um, uh, by just by triangulating, you're guessing it's a, a few miles outside of uh, of Rockport. Um, uh, and as you pierce through uh, the top layer, the canopy of these woods, uh, and look down, you realize just as you land uh, that you are in a swamp. Um, a very, <laughs> you realize just as you land that you've never truly loved anyone. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's not a crash landing. It is a it is a soft landing, but you have landed uh, in the mucky mire of a swamp. Um, you are strapped in. You're actually kind of face down. You're facing down, so you're strapped in, sort of hanging uh, from the chairs, uh, looking down at this uh, swamp. And, and uh, that is where you are. Okay. Um, do we see? Uh, is there anything we can see muck, other than swamp? Any muck. like landmarks or anything? No. There. It, it is. Uh, there are a lot of trees around that are sort of blocking your vision. The only thing you can see is the mucky water below, which your sphere is kind of starting to sink into. Okay. 
Okay. Now, where's the door? Is it in front of us on the muck side? Do we need to roll the sphere backwards the or something? The door is face down in the muck. The door is uh, submerged. It's still closed. The, the muck water's not getting in. Um, I would like to take a throw ourselves backwards so it rolls out of the muck and the door's free roll. That's a that was a lot of things. That was a lot of concepts. Uh, that you right, just just how mad would they be? How mad would the bureau be if I just smashed this thing? Do they have oh, more of them? Insane. Is this the only sphere they've got? Uh, smash! You, smash, you smash. saw several of these spheres in the hangar, so yes, they have more of them. I like my roll it backwards and free the door idea, but sure, go for that. Okay, yeah, try it. Uh, <gasps> Are you going to try and do it while you are still strapped into these chairs hanging from the ceiling? Because it might be well, hard I to get that leverage. Would, that w- oh, all right. Let's unstrap and then push against the side so that we get, begin the sphere rolling until the door is free. Okay. Um, okay. But by the time that the three of you get unstrapped um, without you know landing on each other comically, uh, the, the sphere is uh, about one-third submerged in the, in the goo. Okay. What's your, what's your approach going to be? Are you trying to just basically hamster ball this? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. It's like sinking, though, right? There's nothing solid below us. Are we sinking? Uh, yeah. Okay, we're not going to be able to roll it. Oh, sure. Sinking. Yeah. I'm getting out. I climb out of the door and leave. Uh, the door is, door is underwater. Okay. What? <laughs> You're going to kill us. The door is under goo. Wait, I saw this on Mythbusters. We have to wait till it's completely submerged, and then the pressure equalizes. We can open the door, swim out. Uh, the 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 swamp that you are sinking into uh, is not water. It, it is it is a viscous sort of uh, almost quicksand like goo. How heavy would you say the orb is? It is the the dimensions and weight of a Volkswagen Golf. Hmm. Okay, I smashed through the side of it. Okay. God damn it. What? Somebody's You've, like mowing their lawn like right outside. Oh, my door. I thought I'd made a choice, and you're like, well, fuck. <laughs> you really <laughs> backed me into a corner, Travis. Okay, uh, with uh, your axe? With, with your... my phantom fist. I'm gonna punch through. Okay, uh, using your uh, heavy plate gauntlet phantom fist, which you purchased in the last episode, uh, you rear back. Uh, and punch forward as you do a larger spectral hand sort of wraps itself around your own uh, and helps you in this endeavor and you uh, smash through the glass uh, a a couple feet above the uh, water line of of the uh, goo Uh, and you have successfully made a hole that is uh, big enough for for, uh, the three of you to fit through not all at once, that would be hilarious Uh, but the three of you can, can get through this hole that you've created we do that. <laughs> fully. Uh, okay, the three of you fully get through uh, the door. Uh, the Well, by door, I mean makeshift hole that you have just uh, blasted in the side of this thing. Um, and uh, have made it out onto the swamp. It is very, very tricky terrain. Um, one might even call it difficult terrain. Uh, it's it's hard to keep your footing, and it's hard to sort of keep yourself moving so that you you don't also uh, get glorped down. Don't my magic the... jumping boots like help me in difficult terrain? Am I making that up? Yeah, I think you're making it up. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Guess it's open to debate. If only think... this game were made of everyone making stuff up. Huh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you. Uh... Yeah, so, so the three of you have made it out. Uh, the sphere is almost totally submerged. Um, oh, I left my wallet in there. Would what, what if I were to, to do like um, if I were to use the ray of frost? Could I freeze the swamp around it? Would that work? That's worth a shot. We got a thing going here. Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens. Maybe the blue ring would help him too. That's a frost resistance ring. Yeah, well, yeah, but it ices beverages. It helps me. A swamp is not a beverage. That's. I'm just going to go ahead and cut cut you off at the pass there, Dad. Swamps beverages. aren't drinkable. Well, don't force your <laughs> your choices My on me, old man. Sw- My daddy can drink any swamp he wants. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll uh, I'll cast a ray of frost to try to um to try. Sorry, I like morphed back into Justin because I'm not saying out loud what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to cast Ring of Frost, Ray of Frost, uh, on the, sort of like the swamp around 
uh, the ball to try to halt its its sinkage. Uh, okay, yeah, you do that. You uh, you sort of do a quick circle uh, of ray of frost around the uh, sphere, and you have managed to uh, freeze at least the top part of the swamp, uh, which has managed to halt the descent of your uh, of your sphere. Okay, okay. <laughs> listen, listen. We need to get busy here. Okay. I don't have I, I don't have any magic. That can help point us in the direction we need to go. We're trying to catch a train, right? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. We got. I don't have. N- none of my spells sort of leap to mind that would be uh, helpful to us. Um, Your uh, this hideous laughter. Or nothing. You guys have any like spells or uh, uh, abilities? Can I do a perception check to see if I can can sense any like train like activities? Uh, can you do? Sorry. A perception check to see if you sense any train-like abilities. <laughs> I mean, like a a, dis, a distant flood lamp, or perhaps a place where tracks used to be but aren't right now. This is um, a solid, solid plan. Yeah, so that is some solid dungeoneering is what that is. Uh, we use, I got a one. <laughs> so you fail, so you just go critically fail on your... Um, but we we know the direction. I we could start s- shoveling swamp into my mouth. Uh, we could we have see Rockport when we landed. The three like, of we you, have a I'm general gonna this, idea. I'm going to set the scene. The three of you are standing in swamp water, just sort of s- stomping around to keep yourself from sinking. Uh, you have frozen the swamp around the sphere. Um, as the three of you... Uh, uh, are debating furiously about what trains could possibly be close to you. Uh, you hear a uh, kind of a goopy sound coming from above you in the uh, the canopy of the trees above. And uh, you hear okay. a goopy sound. A goopy sound? Yeah, kind of like a. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Okay, can I do a uh, can I do a perception check to see if I like? Let's all do a perception check. I got a, a sixteen. I got a uh, thirteen. Oh, I got fifteen because I have a minus one perception. Fourteen. Okay, Magnus, you uh, you see just for a flash of a second uh, a, a green slimy eye stalk. Um, popping out of the canopy of the largest tree above. Um, and as soon as you sort of make eye contact with it, it zips back up into the tree. Hello. What, do you know where the train is? Magnus, actually, as you yell at it to try and um, uh, negotiate or, or get some information, um, the ice talk pops back out. Uh, and then... Uh, further down the branch, another eye stalk pops out. And then uh, from a hole in the tree, another eye stalk pops out. What up? Um, and slowly from those three positions, uh, the you, you see uh, begin to climb out uh, these uh, dark green um, uh, leeches begin to come out of the tree. Uh, the ones on the branches are descending towards you on strings of goo and plop down uh, on the surface of the swamp next to you. Um, the one coming out of the tree uh, is, has made it down to the base of the tree. Um, and the, the one that just came down off the tree, the biggest one, uh, rears back uh, and opens a mouth lined with three rows of razor-sharp teeth. And it begins hissing at you. Hello! Uh, and it's, uh... So I was asking about a train? (laughs) Uh, and it is, uh, it's initiative time. Do you guys remember Uh, battles? I've heard of them. Five. Uh, ten? Twenty. Wow. Top of the order is Merle. Uh, you are on difficult terrain, which means that your movement speed is going to be halved. Um, the leeches are basically lined up in a row in front of you. Um, they all came down off the same tree, uh, and uh, they are... They're close. They're about ten feet away. All right. I want to cast Thorn Whip at them. What is that? I ha- I have no idea what you're talking about. All right. 
You create a long, vine-like whip covered in thorns that lashes out at your command towards a creature in range. You make a melee spell attack against the target. If the attack hits, the creature takes 1d6 piercing damage, and if the creature is large or smaller, you pull the creature up to 10 feet closer to you. Okay. Is this a spell? What? What is this? A second level spell? This is one of the cantrips that was oh, oh, me oh. when I switched over. I see. Cool. Okay. All right. Sweet. Whip away. Fifteen. Fifteen. Is that just what you rolled? That's what I rolled. And then you have your spell casting modifier, and you have plus one because you have your extreme teen Bible now. I think uh, it was so plus five before, so it should be plus, plus five. So it should be yeah. plus six with your teen Bible. So twenty one. So twenty one. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. All right. And then I roll a d six. Mm-hmm. It's a six. Perfect. Magnus yells, don't move them. Okay. Um, wait, do you have to move them? Doesn't have to, huh? Okay, cool. Yeah, you uh, you have whipped him. You whipped him good. <laughs> uh, are you How done? How many like, little things are poking out? Like There are three leeches. Okay. So which one did he just uh, whip? Uh, the one in the middle. The one in the middle? The one that came down off the branch? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you done with your turn? Um, I think so. Okay. Uh, you sink into the swamp uh, to about your waist. Good luck. Next in the order is Magnus. Do we know how much damage we did to him? Uh, six damage. You said it out loud with your mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to run over to the tree or move to the tree they came down off of. Okay. And I'm going to use Rail Splitter to fell it so it falls over on top of all three of them. Okay, awesome. Uh, Yeah, you uh, distribute a devastating chop to the base of the tree that the three of them came down on, uh, angled in a manner to make it sort of slide off uh, in their direction. You give it the old Bushido blade. Uh, it's almost like it's pronounced Bushimi Blade. <laughs> Give the old Bushimi Blade. It's like you didn't. It's like you felt nothing as you went through. It, it, it was almost like you were uh, chopping through a curtain or something. Uh, Sorry, I need to mute our mic. Dad has decided to take this opportunity to enjoy a popcorn snack. <laughs> oh wow! So literally the worst possible audible thing. Um, I put it down. Please don't eat a popcorn snack. You, I was actually looking forward to enjoying the popcorn snack with you. So well, maybe a like sad about during a break. Um, you no, it's not like we couldn't tell that you weren't eating a goddamn popcorn snack. It was like you were break dancing on. Really? How do you know this was my first bag? So <laughs> Travis is doing some dope shit. If you guys Thank would you. allow him, yeah, yeah. Um, you, the rail splitter passes through the tree like a like a baseball bat passing through a ghost. <laughs> um, and the tree uh, slides off of the uh, base and begins to fall in a straight line towards the uh, leeches uh, and they are going to make dexterity saving throws to try and get out of the way uh, the first one the one uh, at the base closest to the tree well the two which is a five that's not going to do it uh, the one in the middle that just got attacked got a 19 that will do it he uh, darts uh, forward towards you. Um, uh, I'm assuming, Travis, that you ran over to the base of the tree to make this happen? Yes. Okay. I, I stated that. Okay. Um, and the third one rolls in 18, which is sufficient. He darts forward, too. Uh, but the tree falls uh, to the side and just completely obliterates the... Uh, it's the leech that was uh, closest to the base, the one that was actually right next to you, Magnus. Um, did someone eat popcorn? Dang, he's good. Yeah, I'm really good. Uh, so you have uh, destroyed one of these leeches. Uh, there's two left. Uh, and I'm going. I just want to say, like, this is the first D and I appreciate this is a podcast. This is the first D and D in history where someone has not been able to enjoy. A salty snack. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> yeah like, really. Never it like the two shouldn't even. It should be in the fucking player's handbook. Like, be sure to get your salty snack to enjoy as you play D anD. d Realism is just blowing all to hell right yeah. now. Yeah, sorry, but I feel that. I way. feel like I'm working. I feel like I'm preparing my taxes. That's what D anD. d is without salty <laughs> snacks. There, I got that off my chest. Well, well, we'll need to come up with some sort of uh, like a one of those booths that they have at carnivals where the money blows around. Listen to Rosa Crunch over here. 
Who, <laughs> listen to who? <laughs> Rosa Crunch. She's not going to the back of the snack bus. Okay. <laughs> well, you know that she wasn't called Rosa Van, right, Dustin? Like, she wasn't about- called Rosa Bus. What are you talking about? <laughs> he just going to keep crunching. Go ahead, move. I'm me. gonna step up on. I'm gonna step up onto the stump. Okay, you're stumping. Oh, that's a good idea. This podcast is an auditory nightmare hellscape. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the money, though. One more time before we let you all go. First, thanks for hanging out with us for an hour. Uh, it, if you are able to help support the Adventure Zone, if you like what you're listening to here, uh, and, and you would like us to keep making it and keep supporting us and making new stuff and all the other hosts of the Maximum Fun Network, please take a moment right now. Go to maximumfun.org/slash/donate and help us make more great content. Remember, ten bucks a month, you get a drive exclusive tote bag plus a ton. of of bonus material that goes back for years of of new stuff. Twenty bucks, you get that the tote bag and a mobile device charger, classable water bottle, antibacterial wipes, and pilot wings. And then for thirty five bucks, you get all that plus a pair of rocket engraved shot glasses with the Max One logo on it. Uh, there's a ton of stuff. But uh, above all that, what you really get is our gratitude. You our, really get our thanks and our love. You won't get that love. No, I'm just kidding. You you'll get it no matter what. We love you no matter what. And we're talking emotional love, right? Not yes. A, not a physical Whatever love. it takes to well, get that awesome. money. Good point. So go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate now. And then tweet at us. Let us know so we can thank you. And then tweet your friends and tell them to go. All our Twitters are just our names. Daddy, what's your Twitter? Uh, Doc Kerm. MaximumFun.org slash donate. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.